The fundamental criticism that Gemini is getting is that, as you pointed out on the West Coast, just to, just to clarify, we're currently on the East Coast, where I would suppose Meta AI headquarters would be. <laughs> so there are uh, strong words about the West Coast, but uh, I guess the issue that happens is, I think it's fair to say that most tech people have uh, a political affiliation with the left wing. They're, they lean left. And so the problem that people are criticizing Gemini with is that there's, in that debiasing process that you mentioned, that their ideological lean becomes obvious. Uh, is this something that could be escaped? You're saying open source is the only way. Have, have you yeah. witnessed this kind of ideological lean that makes engineering difficult? No, I don't think it has to do, I don't think the issue has to do with the political leaning of the people designing those systems. It has to do with the uh, acceptability or political leanings of the, their uh, customer base or audience, right? So a big company cannot afford to offend too many people. So they're going to make sure that whatever product they put out is safe, whatever that means. And, and it's very possible to overdo it. <clears throat> and it's also very possible to, it's impossible to do it properly for everyone. You're not going to satisfy everyone. So that's what I said before, you cannot have a system that is unbiased, that is perceived as unbiased by everyone. It's gonna be, you know, you, you push it in one way, one, set of people are gonna see it as biased and then you push it the other way and another set of people is gonna see it as biased. And then in addition to this, there's the issue of, if you push the system perhaps a little too far in one direction, it's gonna be non-factual, right? You're gonna have, you know, uh, you know, black Nazi uh, soldiers in the- uh, Yeah, so we should, we should mention image generation of, of uh, black Nazi soldiers, which is not factually accurate. Right, yeah. and can be offensive for, for some people as well, right? So, uh, uh, so it, you know, it's going to be impossible to kind of produce systems that are unbiased for everyone. So, uh, the only solution that I see is diversity, and diversity in the full meaning of that word, diversity of in every possible way. Yeah, uh, Mark Andreessen just tweeted today. Let me do a TLDR. The conclusion is only startups and open source can avoid the issue that he's highlighting with big tech. He's asking, can big tech actually field generative AI products? One, ever escalating demands from internal activists, employee mobs, crazed executives, broken boards, pressure groups, extremist regulators, government agencies, the press, in quotes, experts, and everything uh, corrupting the output. Two, constant risk of generating a bad answer or drawing a bad picture or rendering a bad video. Who knows what is going to say or do at any moment. Three, legal exposure, product liability, slander, election law, many other things, and so on. A anything that makes Congress mad. <laughs> Four, continuous attempts to tighten grip on acceptable output, degrade the model, like how good it actually is. Uh, in terms of usable and uh, pleasant to use and effective and all that kind of stuff. And five, publicity of bad text, images, video, actual puts those examples into the training data for the next version, and so on. So he just highlights how difficult this is yeah. from all kinds of people being unhappy. As you said, you can't create a system that makes everybody happy. Yes. Uh, so if you're going to do the fine tuning yourself and keep a closed source, Essentially, the problem there is then trying to minimize the number of people who are going to be unhappy. Yeah, um, and you're saying like the only that that almost impossible to do right, and it's the better way is to do open source. Basically, yeah. I mean, he's Mark is right about uh, a number of things that he lists mm -hmm. that uh, indeed scare um, large companies. Uh, you know, <laughs> certainly congressional investigations is one of them. Legal liability. Uh, you know, uh, making things that uh, get people to, you know, hurt themselves or hurt others. Like, you know, uh, big companies are really careful about not um, producing things of this type. And um, uh, because they have, you know, they don't want to hurt anyone, first of all, and then second, they want to preserve their business. So, 
um, it's essentially impossible for systems like this. They can inevitably formulate political opinions and you know opinions about various things that may be political or not, but that people may disagree about about you know moral issues and you know um, things about like questions about religion and things like that, right? Or or cultural issues that people from different communities would disagree with in the first place. Um, so there's only kind of a relatively small number of things that people will uh, sort of agree on, you know, basic principles. But uh, beyond that, if you if you want those systems to be useful, they will necessarily have to uh, offend a number of people, inevitably. And so open source is just better. And then you diversity is better, diver right? And open source enables diversity. That's right. Open source enables diversity. That so this can be a fascinating world where, if it's true that the open source world, if Meta leads the way and creates this kind of open source foundation model world, there's going to be like governments will have a fine tuned model, and yeah, and and then potentially, uh, uh, you know, people that vote left and right will have their own model and preference and be able to choose, and it will potentially divide us even more, but. That's on us humans. We get to figure out. Basically, the technology enables humans to human more effectively. And all the difficult ethical questions that humans raise will just it'll, um, leave it up to us to figure it out. Yeah. I mean, there are some limits to what, you know, the same way there are limits to free speech, there has to be some limit to the kind of stuff that those systems might uh, be authorized to, um, to produce. Um, you know, some guardrails. So, I mean, that's one thing I've been interested in, which is uh, in the type of architecture that we were discussing before, where the output of a system is a result of an inference to satisfy an objective. That objective can include guardrails. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can put guardrails in open source systems. I mean, if we eventually have systems that are built with this blueprint, uh, we can put guardrails uh, in those systems that guarantee that there is sort of a, a minimum set of guardrails that make the system non-dangerous and non-toxic, et cetera. You know, basic things that everybody would agree on. Um, and and then, you know, the, the fine-tuning that people will add or the additional guardrails that people will add will kind of cater to their uh, community, whatever it is. And, the, yeah, the fine-tuning will be more about the gray areas of what is yeah. hate speech, what is dangerous, and all that kind of stuff. I mean, you've... Well, different still, value systems. Still you know. value systems. I mean, like, uh, but still, even with the objectives of how to build a bioweapon, for example, I think something you've commented on, or at least uh, there's a paper where a collection of researchers is trying to understand the social impacts of these uh, LLMs. Mm -hmm. And I guess one threshold is nice. is like, does the LLM make it any easier... Than a than a search would, like a Google search would. Right. So the increasing uh, number of studies on this seems to point to the fact that it doesn't help. So having an LLM doesn't help you right. uh, design a, or build a bioweapon or a chemical weapon if you already have access to uh, you know a search engine and a library. Uh, and, and so the, the sort of increased information you get or the ease with which you get it doesn't really help you. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is, it's one thing to have a list of instructions of how to make a, a chemical weapon, for example, or a bioweapon. It's another thing to actually build it. And it's much harder than you might think, and an LLM will not help you with that. Um, in fact, you know, nobody in the world, not even like, you know, countries use bioweapons because most of the time they have no idea how to protect their own populations against it. So um, so it's too dangerous actually to kind of ever use. Um, and it's in fact banned by uh, uh, international treaties. Um, chemical weapons is, is different. It's also banned by treaties, uh, but, um, uh, but it's the same problem. It's difficult to use in situations that doesn't turn against the perpetrators. But we could ask Elon Musk, like I can, I can give you a very precise list of instructions of how you build a rocket engine. Mm -hmm. And even if you have a team of 50 engineers that are really experienced building it, you're still gonna have to blow up a dozen of them before you get one that works. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, it's the same with uh, you know, the chemical weapons or bioweapons or things like this. You, it requires expertise you know, in, the, in the real world that 
the net alignment is not going to help you with. And it requires even the common sense expertise that we've been talking about, which is how to take uh, language-based instructions and materialize them in the physical world requires a lot of knowledge that's not in the instructions. Yeah, exactly. A lot of biologists have posted on this actually in response to those things saying like, do you realize how hard it is to actually do the, the lab work? Like, you know, this is not trivial. Yeah, and that's Hans Marvik comes comes to light once again. <laughs>